The next part of the required says post the totals at the end of the month to the relevant accounts in the general ledger. Number four we're going to deal with after we've done all our posting so we'll talk about that just now. So we take all the totals and we need to post them. So let's take a look at our sales journal. <clears throat> the sales journal 322-2302622. My VAT output is a, an account that goes to our statement of financial position. So that is a B account. My sales account goes to N1, it's a nominal account, and my debtors control is an asset account and it'll go to B2. Now, before we go and put this entry in the general ledger, keep in mind that when we started off with the journals, we spoke about the fact that every single transaction can be represented as a journal, as a general journal. So how would this look if we created a general journal with this, our debits and our credits? Let's just make sure we're comfortable with that. In terms of my debits and my credits, in this case, I would debit my debtor's control, okay? Because that represents my asset, and my asset increases on the debit side. So 2622 is my debtor's control. My sales is an income account, and income increases on the credit account. So in terms of my sales, I would credit sales with 2300 and my VAT output indicates a liability and liabilities increase on the credit side and when I have VAT on sales my VAT output it means that I have to pay that money over to the receiver so it creates a liability so I would credit that in this case you can see that your journal balances 2622 on the one side 23 plus 322 gives us 2622 that would be my general journal we are posting, however, straight to the general ledger. So let's go and take these amounts and post them in the general ledger. When we create our general ledger, we said we're starting off with the VAT output account. And again, be very careful that you keep and you follow your folio numbers. So this was B1. And I'm just going to shorten this because my writing obviously is terrible. <laughs> so my VAT from my sales journal was 322. Keep very sure and make sure that you always indicate your folio number. And this was on the 30th of November. My sales came next. This was in one. And I credited my sales on the 30th of November my debtors control. It also came from our sales journal one and that was for 2,300. My debtors control account, again, I'm abbreviating. I really don't suggest you abbreviate in the exam. 30 November. And this is from my sales, comes from our sales journal one. And the total there was 2622. So that is my all my totals for my sales journal has been posted. Make sure that you write these under as you're posting so that you know exactly which columns you've posted and which you haven't. Let's take a look at our sales returns. Again, sales returns can be represented as a journal. What would that look like? In this case, we would debit sales returns because that represents a decrease in your income and income decreases on the debit side so we would have 350 that's decreasing our vat we would decrease as well because if the person has returned the sale then it means that we basically are reversing the sale the sale never happens which means we don't actually owe the receiver that money and we would credit the debtors control to indicate the fact that this person or these people no longer owe me that money that we are decreasing their account and again our debits and our credits match and we know that our stuff is sound. In terms of posting it to the general ledger, we already have a VAT output account, that's B1. We do not have a sales returns account, so we'll create N2 for that. And our debtors control account was already B2, so we have that already. Let's post that. Our VAT output on the 30th of November, this goes to the other side because we are decreasing that. And this is because um, sorry, this also is going to my debtors control and it's coming from my sales returns journal one. Again, be very careful about making sure you pull those folios through properly. And that's 49. My sales doesn't affect this. Debtors control again on the 30th of November. My details here are from my sales returns. 
sales returns journal one and that is an amount of 399 i need to create a sales returns account and my sales returns i am numbering in two oh and i forgot to number that one that's b2 and my sales returns go on this side 30th of november and my debtors control my folio is rj1 and the amount is 350. so that now is my sales return journal posted as well so my sales receipts, my sales returns have both, my sales journal, my sales returns have been posted. So we're done <coughs> with number three. Let's not talk about number four. Post the entries to the VAT output account, then close off the output account to the VAT control account. Why are we doing this? What is this? Okay. Remember when we learned about VAT, we said that when you calculate how much VAT you pay to the receiver, you take your VAT output so when you calculate how much you owe, you take your VAT output less your VAT input. Now we've created an account for our VAT output and we'd have a separate account for our VAT input. If I want to know how much I owe the receiver, I'm going to have to bring these two together to show how much I actually owe. And that goes to a VAT control account. So what we do is we close off the output account. We take everything and we take the balance out of the output account and we close it off to the VAT control account. And we take the balance out of the input account and we close that off to the VAT control account. And that will then show me exactly how much I owe to the receiver. Remember your VAT output is the VAT on all of your supplies and your sales, where your VAT input is the VAT that you can claim on all of your purchases. So the difference between these two, we calculate when we close both of them off to the VAT control account. But we can never make entries directly in the general ledger. So when we take a look at the general ledger, we can see we've got our VAT output account. We need to create a VAT control account. Okay, so I need to create a VAT control account. And this is also a B account because this shows me my liability in terms of SARS, how much I actually owe them. But I can't just go and put amounts in here because we never post anything to the ledger directly, to the general ledger directly. It always goes through a journal first. So we create a sales, sorry, a general journal for this. The question is how much? In order for me to figure out how much I need, let me take a balance of this and see what the difference is. Because I've got items and amounts on the debit and the credit, I need to know what the difference is so that I know exactly how much I need to take out of this. So my higher amount here is 322. So if we say 322. So the difference between 322 and 49 is 273. So in order for me to make this zero, I'd have to pass a transaction for a journal for 273. So let's pass a general journal. My general journal for November 13. And again, keep in mind, we number this, my page number. On the 30th of the month, I will have to debit my VAT output account in order to make it zero. And I'll have to debit that by 273 Rand. I will credit my VAT control account and that will show me my total liability in terms of my VAT. And that indicates that is my transfer of VAT output to the VAT control account. Okay. And we underline that. And then we need to post that journal through to the general ledger. I already have my VAT output account that was B1 and I created a VAT control account was B3. So I need to put that in there. My other side of the journal there is going to go to my VAT control and that came from general journal one on the 30th of November. And the other side of the journal is going to go to my VAT control account and that came from my VAT output. The other side of the journal is my VAT output and that also came from general journal one. That's where you'll find it and it also was for 273 Rand. So that indicates 
exactly how much I owe the receiver at this point in time is 273. I haven't seen and I haven't done any transactions for any purchases that have my have, might have any purchase input so of any VAT input so I've got nothing to take off of that. Again there's a lot of detail, a lot of marks in here to make sure that you get your folio numbers right, to make sure you get the VAT right. Lots of small little detail. It's going to take some practice to make sure that you get each one of these little journals right, that you get each one of these columns right. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot of transactions when you look at it, but when you're finished with it and when you're done with it, there's a lot of information that comes out of there. And guys, the only way you're going to get this right is by constantly practicing this yourself. Making those little mistakes where you forget to pull the folio number in or you forget to get the right amount, you forget the calculation. Make sure you practice this so that you do start getting it right. But get it right, you need to. You need to work on this and make sure that you're comfortable with where all of this fits in and your debits and credits. So make sure you've attempted this. Make sure that you've attempted the questions in the tat letter and um, make sure that you're comfortable with the concepts that we've covered.